Hi gang, I'm going to do a video critique of everyone's work today so everyone can kind of see what I'm what I'm thinking about, what hopefully you guys can be thinking about, things you can learn from this from one another. One of the things I'd like for you guys to do in addition to listening to this is to go in and make comments on the Facebook pages. Uh, or the Facebook albums, to be more specific, of everyone's work. So when you get into the albums, there's an arrow at the bottom of the page, and a few people's albums are on the second set of pages. So go explore um, that if you haven't done it. Uh, a couple of you I sent an email out to this morning where you haven't uploaded your albums yet, so you need to do that if you haven't done that. One of the things I'm noticing just right off the bat is, as I was clicking through these, some of us are missing our metadata information, and I'm not quite sure why that is, um, and I would like to see that metadata, so let's figure out what's going on. If I have the metadata there, I can help you with your photographs. I can help you make them better, so if I have that info there. So some definitely have it, um, and others do not, so that's one of the things I want to think about. I know that I said early on also that uh, it was fine to send me small photos, but I decided I changed my mind. Send me the larger photos in these emails because I am going to do this. I think it's going to help us uh, be more focused on what we're doing, and it'll give you guys editing ideas and stuff. If the images are too small, you can't see them. So I'm just going to go through and talk about what we're looking at here. Uh, I put everyone's uh, photos from this first project into this interesting backgrounds, interesting light uh, folder. I attached your names to it, and I kept your uh, file numbers that were there, uh, or what your file names were. So just to be aware of that, to kind of give you an idea. I like to name things by the project, the week, the location, or something along those lines. So if I was doing this project, I would have put down uh, week two, interesting light, and then the date, or start with the date, Interesting light week two. Just something so I know what it is. And then I'd put it in a folder uh, called travel class just to make life a little easier. Um, so I'm in the bridge right now. Some of you guys have the bridge. Some of you don't. Um, if you're not using Adobe uh, products to edit your work or you're using apps on your phone, that's fine. In the next email, just shoot me a note as to what you're using because then I can help fine tune your editing there as well. So what I'm just going to talk about today mainly is Photoshop and Snapseed. And then if I'm talking about Photoshop, I'm also talking about Lightroom. Okay, you can do the same thing in Adobe Camera Raw as you can in Lightroom. So here is Judy's uh, cover page. Remember I said in between the projects you want to make something uh, to separate the different groups of work that you have. And I'm guessing Judy did this in the Adobe Spark, or she could have just done it in Photoshop with layers. But if you haven't looked at Adobe Spark post yet, it's a 10 minute learning curve, maybe 20. And I'm gonna be creating a video on that very soon. I don't expect you to jump on that right away, but if you feel adventurous, go for it. Um, once I do show you how to do it, I'm gonna ask that you go back and make cover pages to go in between your different assignments. And it'll look something like this. There's a lot of variety, and I'll show you those when I in the video. So this is a, a nice start. Um, Judy went out and explored interesting light. So these are her shots. Oh, let's go back here. Okay, so you guys can kind of get a sense. They're working really nicely in black and white. She's got nice highlight and shadow detail. Um, on this particular image, she noted that she wanted the girls, one in black and one in white, to be silhouetted, silhouetted walking side by side. Um, but the one little girl took off a little f faster into the light, and she was wearing the light, so she was liking that. And that was a good observation, and it works really, really well here. So I think this is one of the standouts in this group. Um, this one, I would like to see maybe the edges darkened a little bit. Um, I find those trees that are kind of cropped there a little distracting, but that's me. But you've got nice dappling of light, so you were looking at some interesting things here. So I say keep going. You have great observational skills. I've known Judy for a long time in classes, and um, I can't wait to see what else she's going to do this semester. But as far as black and white goes, you want to think about whether it's appropriate for travel photography or not. If it's a personal project, 100% yes. If you're trying to work for a magazine or get into some of these blogging sites online, you might be thinking color and black and white, or just go with color. Color is going to be the more accepted in that 
area, but that's not to say that you can't make a mark doing black and white. You just really want to be clear as to why or what your goals are as a photographer. I, I like that one as well. Um, it would have been interesting also to stand right on that line that's running up to the bicycle and have everything totally symmetrical. Um, that would be a nice uh, a secondary image to make if another bicyclist goes by. Okay, so now we're on to Michael's work. And I'm wondering why there's a white line at the bottom here of this image. I wonder if, uh, let me just open it up. Yeah, do you see that little white line there? Um, I'm wondering about that. Uh, was it a screen grab? It's a 96 PPI image, but this one also has no metadata. Okay. So, but let's look at the images. There's a lot of sky here and you're cutting off the bottom of the building. So if it's about getting that mural up on the side of the D, which is really cool, you might want to pull out a zoom lens and really focus in on that. Right now it kind of has a little bit of an awkward crop, but I like what you're looking at here. So I would play with uh, a longer zoom on this one. I know you were interested in doing signs. I'm gonna just click through these so you guys can see what he, Michael had for his. Oh. And then we'll, we'll go back. And you got that white line on, on a couple of them. So did you do a screen grab to put these, to send these to me? So send me the original files um, next time. Okay, so this one, um, feeling a little awkward where everyone's cropped off at the backs. If it's really about the sign, longer lens, get up there and get the sign. Remember you guys, if you're around school, CSN, you can check out a lens in the summer with this class. So you could go check out a long lens if you have a Canon or a Nikon camera and uh, play with that. You just need to go talk to Larry Marks. And if you have more questions, you need a current student ID, um, shoot me an email. Um, once again, I think it's about the science to move in. Uh, you might even, things are feeling like a little tight. I'm, I want you to think about what's happening at the bottom of your frame as well as what you're looking at, what your subject matter is. So everything has to work within the frame. So the awkward cropping at the bottom, either you darken that up in, in editing or you really just zoom in on what you want to capture. Here, this one feels like it's a little soft. It's not totally in focus. And I would look at your metadata, but there wasn't any to see what you're doing. It looks like you may have shot, popped a flash off here. Um, I think it was wannabe Chippendales or something that he was. So I thought that was really humorous. I like the humor there, um, playing with it. That certainly is a stylish uh, guy with his red shoes and red bag. So looking at interesting things, that's the first step. But let's dial in some of the technical. Um, just what I was talking about earlier, you're really focusing in on the flag. I think that's making for a stronger image here and then back to where we started. So think about your edges. Think about what's happening at the bottom of your, of your frame. Not everything has to be uh, kind of centered, which you kind of got a lot of, a little bit of centering going on here. Um, think about the rule of thirds and think about telling a story. What's the story about the signs? The signs are Fremont Street experience. So yes, they are there. So even Instead of getting that long lens and zooming in, what happens if you step back and you, you include all of the people? But then you have to wait for something to happen with the people. So it's all about that timing. I would wait for there not to be cars in the photo driving through there just to kind of give more of the illusion that this is a walking, pedestrian-friendly area. Um, sometimes it's hanging out for 15 minutes waiting for the right shot. That's what I would be doing down here because it's chaotic, so you need to corral the chaos. Another thing you could do is go for a longer exposure and have the people blurred. But then you'd probably need a monopod. Uh, tripods, they won't allow down on Fremont Street. So just something to think about. Okay, so now we're over to Lee. And Lee does have her metadata there. She's shooting at 3200 ISO, 1 of a second F8 on this one. It is on the dark side. Um, this would be a great time to, to pull out that flash and pop it. If not, even if with this being a JPEG, I can come up here into the bridge and go to this little opening camera raw. And we're going to open it up here. And I can look at this metadata, or not the metadata, the uh, histogram up top here. And everything's down here in this dark area. So what happens if I 
attempt to pull this over. So it's getting a little lighter. And then I'm going to grab my white balance. I don't even know if we can get a decent white balance. Oh, that's looking a little bit better. I'll put a little bit more warmth back into it. Pull up some shadows. Pull this up a little bit more. Let's see, what do we want to do? A little dehaze there maybe. Maybe I'll pull down the vibrance a little. I'm being careful not to make my blacks look gray as I'm trying to lighten this. Okay, so that's one of the things you want to think about. Um, in the latest update of Adobe Camera Raw, they've moved dehaze into this first basics panel, which is really exciting. Okay, and you can see that it was a pretty slow exposure. We know that, uh, one thirty of a second, so you got some movement here in the hand. That's okay, because we've got this part in focus. So we went from this to this looking a little bit better. If you wanted to create a little bit more warmth, you could just by pushing that temperature up. Let's see here. Just for fun, let's click auto and see what it, how auto handles it. We can go back to the defaults. If we hit auto, yeah, it's doing a pretty good job too, but it look, it's looking a little noisier. So something just to think about. I'm going to take it back off of there and hit done. So there's a lot that we could do with this, as you can see. Um, we move on to this one. 1 40th of a second, 3.5, 3200 ISO. Um, the description was about the man looking, taking the photo of the woman and then realizing that the background was a woman. Um, so that was kind of interesting. It doesn't read, though, as that as a photograph. So I would look for that interaction between the two people because it's him looking at the sculpture and her looking at you, and she's not really that in focus. So focus, focus, focus is key here um, with this type of image. I would either want more people in it or you know, try to wait for there to be no people in it. Um, I'm looking here. So you're at 1 40th of a second. So hand holding at 1 40th of a second can be difficult. So practice some of that breathing techniques where you hold your arms into the side to brace yourself, and as you breathe out, snap the picture. Um, this one I thought was pretty fun as a travel shot the, with the different modes of transportation. The uh, blackened edge, uh, the vignette on it, I think kind of ruins it though because we start to lose the transportation. So I would pull that off and take a look at it. And then I'm not opposed to removing this guy using a little Photoshop skill and removing right in here, getting rid of this guy right here. These two are fine. They're having a conversation or three over there. And I think they'd pop out a little bit more. So something to think about there. Let's look at Nancy's. So Nancy, I'm not sure what the interesting light is here. I, I guess the bird is glowing a little bit, but enhance that through your Photoshop skills, and I do know you have Photoshop skills. So we start to get a glow on that bird, um, but enhance it, okay? Um, awkward with the car coming in from the side. Um, if it's about that plant and the light hitting the plant, eh, get in there, crop in. This one, it's getting a little out of focus. So it's a long exposure. Let's see, do we have metadata? Yeah. ISO 200, 1 20th of a second at 2.4. Why don't you crank that up to 3200 and, and get your shutter speed up, okay, so that we can see, we can freeze everything. So really hard to handhold at a 20th of a second. And what are you shooting? An iPod Touch. Okay. So you probably don't have a lot of control over your iPod Touch for uh, cranking up your ISO. So here, I'm guessing you're against the glass. So just really hold the camera right up against the glass to help steady the camera and see what happens there. Um, if a lot of people are walking across that bridge, you might be getting movement from the people walking and uh, it's just not steady. So that could be part of the problem here too. But really work on crisp, sharp images for everyone. Okay, you don't wanna be handing in, handing in to me, or to your editor, or to put out there to represent you images that aren't in focus. I like what you're looking at, though. Um, the lights are nice, the movement of the lights, the time of day, that's working. So it's looking pretty good here. Um, it is kind of interesting light, but I'm like wondering why are we looking at this as a travel shot too with the uh, porta toilet out there and and things like that. So I would I would go and really focus in on 
the building, the light, and get rid of some of that other stuff that is uh, not as pretty. Am I still on? Nope, I've moved on to Chandra. So, okay, so Nancy, really look at the light and look at the big picture. So like these two guys right here are really singular centered objects. This one, you're starting to get a great idea as to some nice movements showing Las Vegas off, but you need to have it in focus. This one, I like the mural on the building. Um, it feels crooked, so I try to straighten things up a bit. Um, like that time of day, that's a perfect time of day to get out and shoot. Okay, so on to Chandra's. Let's see, how far does she go so I don't keep skipping over that? Okay, to the Abbey Road. Okay, so looking good here. I am not at all opposed to a little... Photoshop to remove stuff. But if you don't have Photoshop, and what are you shooting with here? Let's see. Ah, uh, you probably have Photoshop if you got a Canon EOS 5D Mark III. Okay, so I'm gonna be really critical here. Well, I'm not really ever that critical, but the top of the El Cortez sign, either crop it in or crop it out. If it's about the mural, um, change your positioning a little bit. Uh, it's feeling a little awkward with how things are being cropped. I might wait, come back, and sh try to shoot it without that car there. Um, the light is starting to get nice in the background. I like the glow off the traffic lights. Um, but this top stuff is awkward. So I would remove this traffic light here. And if I can't crop that out, I would just do a little Photoshop retouching there. Um, I would darken the ground through here. Um, so that to make these trash bins less noticeable and push our eye towards this. So I'd really focus to bring this up a little bit more. Um, this is great, showing off uh, the mantis and the people. But I want to see that downtown container park in the picture. Um, it helps to define where you are. So you need that part in this image or it totally out of the image. But I like that foreground of the people. I like that you're catching the light. That thing is hard to catch. I've tried it myself. Stood there for quite a while until I got the picture I wanted. But really think it all about all your edges. Edges are key, you guys. Look at your edges. And for this one, I love the interaction of the people with the... Uh, Locks of love, but I find her distracting and I find him distracting. So wait a few minutes for them to disappear. Someone else will come, or, come along and look at the, the locks. And um, I have no idea what this is, this trash over here, but that's an easy Photoshop removal too. But that's a good moment that you caught there. I think this one's fun. Um, just having the feet going across here, um, I'm not opposed to, you know, even going in and doing a little cleanup on some of these bigger things, uh, these bigger dots in here. But I think this one's really working. I would probably remove all of these little edges, these dark edges, trash cans or whatever they are. That's a quick and easy removal. So you got some good stuff going on here. We're at ISO 1000. Uh, one one hundred second, so you're stopping the action, so that's pretty good. So it looks like your settings are in the ballpark we want them to be. Okay, so this uh, this group, so we had one that was an interesting background and three that are interesting light, so she wanted to explore both. I think that is an interesting background. And I love that guy in over on the left-hand side with his arms up. He's just kind of crazy. Um, but once again, the top here, I, I want to either know what those words are or I want them gone. And you can crop that. Um, you might want to play with your depth of field a little bit more on this, and I don't know what your settings were. Um, you could pull it out a little, you know, give a little bit more depth of field so that you can have him in there, or you can not. It looks a little soft um, through here, but let's see if I open it up if that's the case. So a lot of times, ah, much better when I open it up. Okay, so never mind that. Let's go back over here. Um, and then the crop in. I'm guessing you crop this to get closer because um, they are both different size images. Um, it's an interesting backdrop, but it's not an interesting moment. So think about the moments. However, I'm so saddened by this. It is very telling of today. Um, the interaction with our iPhones. 
And you see that everywhere. And it's hard sometimes to make a great shot when everyone is looking at their iPhone or whatever their phone is. So just keep that in mind uh, while you're shooting. My dog just went outside all on her own. So <laughs> good. Now I don't have to stop recording this. Okay, so think about the interesting interactions too. Okay. Oh, there are two different shots. It's not a crop. So I can I see the fingers are different, even though his hands, his feet um, are the same. But the thumb on the one, this one is up and it's down here. So there are two different shots. Okay, what do we have next? Okay, so we got we're on to three interesting light shots. And I think these are working. Um, you did catch a great time of day. This will fall right into our the, the uh, blue hour, golden hour stuff that we're going to do. Um, I like this motorcycle guy riding past you and looking at you. Um, that's that's the moment. Those are those moments that we're, we're looking for. That's the interaction. Um, you're framing it nicely with that tree up above. Uh, the road is working well. So this is a very nice shot. So well done here. Um, this one, same thing. I like the light that's happening. I kind of want to see a little bit of that sign, what the sign actually says a little bit more. And that's an easy little uh, Photoshop fix as well. Let's see here. If we pop into ACR and we just kind of even pop some of the, pop that up a little bit. So let's do one more thing. We're going to hit cancel. This, we're just going to open it this time, Command O into Photoshop, and we're going to duplicate the background of it, the background layer. So now we got the two layers, and we'll come up here to lens correction. No, I lied, not lens correction. <laughs> I know better than that. Camera raw filter, just where we were. OK, then if we do the shadows, pop that up a little bit. And the reason why I made the second layer is because see how this is getting brighter? It's kind of losing that nice dramatic impact. We're going to say OK. So here's that new layer. Here's the one below. See the difference? But let's turn that back on. Let's add a layer mask. Invert the layer mask, Command-I. Grab our paintbrush and paint with white. Brush is big. I'm using my bracket keys to downsize it. My opacity is at 100% now. I'm painting with white. So I can kind of pop that up. So, you know, little, some of these little touches like this. Really will finish an image, okay? And it doesn't look wrong. I think I got a little too light down here, so I'm going to make my brush bigger. I'm going to switch over to black by hitting X on my keyboard. X takes you between white and black. And I'm going to change my opacity down to 30%. And I just hit 3 on my keyboard to do that. And then I'm just going to knock this down a little bit. And I'm not going to knock down the top. So from this to this makes a difference. OK, so think about it. Command S, I'm saving that. There you go. Command W to close it, get out of Photoshop, and go back where we, where we were. So. Here are the two shots. The only difference is, well, I open it into Photoshop, and now it's a PSD, and it's color managed. OK, so hopefully that helps you uh, see a few details in there that you want to take care of. So I think these are some really nice shots. This one I didn't really talk about. Um, I'm feeling the bottom's a little awkward with the lights there, so I would either remove those lights right down here. Um, I'm not sure what's going on right here. I think that might be the break in the window from the from where you're standing. Um, so play that up or move to a different location or put your camera right up to the glass uh, to make the shot because you're, you're also getting a little bit of softness. It's, it's kind of messing with us. So either play it up and make it more abstract or try to figure out how to undo that.